Hello there, my name is Ismail, and today I want to show you how to make this uh, island in Blender 2.8. Uh, this is just going to be a project overview talking about the different workflows I used uh, to achieve this. And uh, But uh, if you want to watch the entire time lapse of the project from start to finish, it's going to be on my second channel, Blender Money. Uh, so you can go there, subscribe and uh, watch that. Uh, if you want the project files, you can get them on my Patreon page so that you can uh, examine uh, the uh, the project and look at how I set up everything as I may not be able to cover everything that I did here But uh, you can watch that in my time lapse if you want as well So let's uh, look at uh, the project and uh, talk about the different things. So I've already done a tutorial, a tutorial on how to make the animated uh, Sky uh, with, with the animated clouds uh, a sky box like this. Uh, you can watch that on my second channel It's a tutorial step by step so you can watch that if you want to and uh, now let's first begin uh, by looking at uh, how to make this water effect. Uh, but maybe before we go to that, because I think that's very simple, let's first talk about how I did the terrain and uh, yeah, created this surface where uh, the slopes have a different material from these, uh, from the other areas of the uh, surface of the terrain. So let's get into this. So uh, if I disable some of these plants here, a second and uh, I went to sculpt mode I can update uh, the surface here and you can see it will also update uh, the materials so when I add more elevation out uh, to the surface or to the terrain uh, the slopes will get a different material uh, from the I think they're called plateaus or the flats areas or the top areas I'll just call them that so you can even update you can sculpt your surfaces I've seen this workflow uh, being used in uh, Unreal and uh, other game engines are uh, like uh, like unity uh, where uh, the artist just sculpts and uh, the material or the surface uh, textures just update real time that's what I was going for here and I think I managed to do that uh, here so let, let's talk about the material how I set it up uh, to get it to work uh, like this so if we go to the material of uh, the surfaces the terrain itself I can see it's broken up in three different parts we have uh, we have uh, this grass surface or grass shader and then we have uh, this rock shader and then we have a mask to blend uh, the two and uh, the mask you can see is uh, masking out uh, the slopes from the uh, top surfaces and uh, the way I managed to do that is by using uh, the normal the normals of uh, the geometry so if you add a texture coordinate node uh, you can find that I think under yeah input texture coordinate uh, you can just sample the normal input or normal output I don't think this is okay actually this might be this the mapping might not be necessary let me see to achieve this it's not necessary but uh, if you want more control you can add it uh, to kind of reposition uh, your your slope if you wanted to but uh, it's not really necessary as you can just feed this directly into the vector but uh, if in case you want to uh, reposition your normals maybe rotate this let me see rotate can i rotate you can see get a different shade you can do that let me just show you the entire setup as i update that show you the need for this mapping node so i can change how the slope looks how much of the slope is covered with uh, the rock surface using this but uh, it's not necessary if you're not going to do that. Uh, so I fed that into the separate X1, X and Y uh, coordinates because I wanted uh, to sample all the faces uh, that we are facing the Z direction or the normal direct, the Z, yeah, I think this calls it Z direction. So you can see if you separate the X and Y, you get different masks. Uh, this is just masking uh, normals facing the X direction of the normal. And then, yeah, so I just wanted the Z and I, to get that you just go under shift shift a uh, convert separate x y and z that will separate your normal 
your normal input into x and y x y and z values are that you can use uh, for your mask and uh, then uh, because you can if you see this uh, there is not a lot of contrast between this uh, so i wanted it to be there to be more contrast so i use the power node uh, to make it a bit more contrasted uh, as you can see here and uh, then use that as the mask for this mix mix shader that mixes uh, the rock and the and grass surface this yeah like so again if you go to edit mode if you go to sculpt mode you can update you can sculpt while updating uh, the tearing texture you can see uh, another thing you have to note here is is that uh, you you don't you should not use UV texture coordinate if you're going to use this method uh, because when you sculpt uh, any mesh, it loses its UVs. Uh, so you need to use box uh, texture coordinates instead of UV coordinates because uh, this will lose its uh, UV coordinates when you sculpt it. And uh, if you're going to use box coordinates, sorry, object coordinates, uh, you need to also make sure that your textures use box projection instead of flat projection. Otherwise, uh, the textures are going to look stretched and uh, uh, so that's it for the terrain and uh, now let's go to the water surface uh, the I also added some grass but uh, that's not a, there's nothing much to talk about there it's just a, a particle system hair system with a with a hair object with a with an object with a plane uh, with this hair texture or grass texture on it uh, there's nothing complicated about that and um, maybe next time i'll try using more a more realistic tree instead of just using a plain surface like this because uh, uh at close-ups it doesn't really look uh, that nice but uh at uh at a far distance i think it's okay it's uh when you start closing in uh that's when uh, it becomes a bit yeah unrealistic yeah, so i was let's uh, talk about uh, the water surface here how i created that you can see it here uh, it's also animated so to create the water surface what i did is uh it's very simple and procedural so i just created a plane scaled it up isolate it for a second new material I use a noise, I use a noise texture, fed that into the bump map, which I fed into the normal map, uh, to create some surface displacements. I would not see it very clearly, uh, but uh, until you change the, uh, the base color to something a bit darker, let me make sure this is actually we're actually seeing some noise here okay okay and you can see the noise and uh, let's also reduce the reflective the, the roughness and make it more reflective okay maybe this is too dark somewhere like that and uh, now you just have to play with the noise uh, to make it look uh, like water you just play with the scale you can also play with the detail or the roughness to make it more like water so uh, if you're trying to create a light if you want to make uh, the water look like it's a, a light surface of water you just have to increase the roughness so that you have very very small ripples compared to less roughness where you have large ripples like that I also wanted to have the water look a bit deep and uh, for that what I did is uh, added an, a fractional input uh, and fractional node and uh, I used this to blend uh, the colors uh, so the deep water would be a bit greenish and then the uh, the near water would look different let me just show you what I mean here so if I add a color mix RGB and I use maybe this is a bit bluish like that and this is a uh, 
bit greenish like that. I can blend the two using the freshener. You can see, let me just crank this up using a car ramp. Give this a bit of contrast. You see how, so basically let me explain how the freshener works. So it changes, it creates a gradient, and that changes depending on your view angle. And uh, I found this to kind of make the water look deep. All right, so if I fit this into the base color, let's give this a moment. You can see, I think it makes the water look like seawater and uh, also a bit deep. So can, uh, and if you want the water to, to appear uh, much darker, you can add a hue and saturation node between the mix and the base color. I'm gonna just play with the value here to make it dark or bright. So I think around there, yeah, you can see we have different tones in the water. Now to animate the water, you just have to animate the noise texture by using uh, the texture coordinate mapping. I've used the uh, Ctrl T shortcut on the texture code on the noise map to add these two nodes. Uh, that only works if you have the node wrangler add on enabled. Then you can animate the Z location of this mapping node. So I'll just add a keyframe here and then another keyframe around there. Now if you play back, you can see that uh, the water is being unmated. Uh, something to note here is that uh, you can see that uh, the water starts out uh, with a slow animation and then speeds up. Uh, that's because of our, because of the keyframe type, handle type uh, we are using here. Uh, the default is set to uh, this, uh, I think it's called aligned. Uh, you want to change it to vector so that you have a constant speed so that it doesn't appear to, to speed up uh, as time goes. And I think this speed is a bit high, so I might want to uh, control tab into edit mode for the timeline uh, to drag down at reduce uh, the speed like so. Uh, that's how I did the water. Now, yeah, I think yeah, the plants are very simple and uh, I have a kayak here that I think ties things very nicely. Again, you can get the project files on uh, Patreon. You can see this is uh, very well modeled uh, with and uh, very high detailed. Yeah, thank you for watching. Again, uh, the time lapse is going to be on my second channel, Blender Money, so that you can see how I created the entire project from start to finish. Uh, but uh, the project files are going to be on my Patreon page and uh, then the, ah, this tutorial is going to be on top channel one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.